Good morning, friends. And this week, I want to take you on a, on a journey through one of the most familiar parts of the Bible. It's found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, and it's uh, the famous teaching of Jesus called the Sermon on the Mount, the beginning of which is a series of blessings, which we call the Beatitudes. I think a good way to look at the Beatitudes is to put a hyphen between the word be, B-E, and the word attitude, because they tell us the kind of attitudes or perspectives that will build a successful inner life. Jesus, who is the creator and who made the human frame, knows as the master psychologist what's good for us and what attitudes will help our life be the most successful life possible. So he starts us in this journey called the Beatitudes at the beginning of his ministry with a series of blessings. Blessing is a word that seems to be very ambiguous. We use it even for persons who sneeze. But uh, the word actually means that God approves this kind of mindset or behavior. And because he approves of it, uh, you have a consequent inner joy that flows from his approval. And the first beatitude is simply this, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I've paraphrased this in terms of the self-affirmation that we should say, I need help. Blessed are the poor in spirit. He's not saying, blessed are you if you're economically poor. It's not, it's not any fun to be poor. Uh, it is a poor in spirit. The two possible words that Jesus could have employed in the language in which the New Testament is written for the word poor, one word for poor is to describe somebody who's just getting by but has enough to eat and shelter over their head and and clothing to wear. The other word for poor is the word that is more closely matched by the word destitute. It describes the person who can't get by unless somebody else helps him or her. This is the word that Jesus uses. Blessed are the destitute poor. What Jesus is articulating in that first beatitude is what every 12-step program has subsequently discovered, that true change in our lives does not begin until we are honestly willing to say, I need help. And those who say, I need help, get the kingdom. If we, for example, say, I don't need forgiveness, I don't need God's offer of eternal life, I can figure out and make up my own rules as I go, then we don't get the kingdom. But if we come to God from an honest heart and say, I need help, I am poor in spirit, I am unable to give myself eternal life, I am unable to give myself forgiveness of sins, oh God, I need that from you. Jesus is saying that the person who has that attitude actually winds up getting the kingdom, for that is the entrance requirement into the kingdom, and that is the requirement for continued living as a Christian that we demonstrate of life that's dependent upon God's help.